Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going back to the basics and I know I have not made a video in quite some time, but I'll definitely try to be a bit more consistent going forward. So the video that we'll be creating today is going to be about icon generation and how to create icons. Um, I actually have been reviewing some videos on YouTube about icon generation and a lot of the times people just go here and they just start working on things. They say, hey, if you want to create an icon, you draw a shape like this, then you can cut it like you can just do something like that. You can cut it and then here you have a shape and here's your icon. Well, that's not really how you create pixel perfect icons. <clears throat> In order to create pixel perfect icons, you need to take certain precautionary measures. And I'm going to be talking about a detailed process as to how you go about and do that. So without further to do, let's just get started. The first thing that you need to do is you need to enable this pixel grid. Once you enable that, as you can see, if I'm just gonna zoom in, there are really dark points here um, that actually you can, like not really dark, like really light points here off the grid that you can see here, but they're not really visible. So in order to make them visible, <clears throat> uh, well, you, can make, you can't really make them visible, but one thing that's really helped me is you actually need to go ahead here to the box that you have and it's really important that the box itself is let's say 24 16 um, in any of those shapes or any of those sizes <clears throat> ideally it should be 24 it should either be 12 24 48 stuff along those lines in that uh, sort of trajectory because you need to give the gutter spacings as well so in order to now go ahead and make your grid visible you can just go ahead and go to the layout grid on the right you can make sure that the grid option is selected and you can say that it should be a one pixel grid so now you should be able to see your one pixel grid what's really important is you also want to have gutters on the left and or left and the right and the top and the bottom <clears throat> so when you're creating an icon usually you actually want to especially if it's like rectangular or square you actually want to create an icon that's 20 by 20 pixels in height and width and there's a two pixel gutter for certain icons where some, let's say the shape may actually be really uh, coming close to the edge, so on and so forth. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, this should be sufficient to start, but ideally what I would like you to recommend you is you need to also go ahead and give those gutters as well. So I'm gonna say, I wanna give a count one and I wanna give a margin from the left and the right of two. Now that I have that done, I'm basically just gonna click here, copy and then paste, and I wanna do the same thing for rows. So here you have the container in which you're ideally going to be designing in, but there are going to be instances where you go close to the gutter, but this gutter is just to remind you, this whole layout grid is just to remind you that you should ideally stick in between this. So once you have done that, you can basically just go ahead and actually create a style for it. So these are my icon guidelines, and now we can start designing icons. Well, the first thing that we need to do if we have to start designing icons is we have to pick some icons. So I can go here, I can pick any specific icon here. <clears throat> we can start with some basic ones as well if you wanna go ahead and do that. So let's just go ahead and create an icon like this. So I have copied this icon, I'm gonna paste it here. If I, let's say, just paste this icon at the top, as you can see, it is not really following the guidelines that I've mentioned um, because but it actually is a 24 by 24 pixel icon. And the reason why it's not following it, it's because they've actually given an, a stroke on this icon, which actually is applied to the center. But if you actually, if I just remove the stroke, it actually is following the shape that I mentioned. The icon stroke, since it was on the center, it's actually exceeding the points, but it's really following the guidelines well. As you can see, if I go to this shape, obviously this isn't really following it because it's using the 2.5 pixel. Uh, <clears throat> shape for this so there are some inconsistencies here and i don't want to again barge in on the creator who's created it because it, it's basically maybe personal preference well it really isn't but at the very least if uh you're looking for my recommendations i would definitely recommend sticking to this 20 by 20 pixel box and making sure that the icons sit on pixels like perfect pixels that's basically what you can mean by pixel perfection so on and so forth um, so I'm just going to go ahead and oh, why, I don't know why I'm actually designing this icon here, but if I just have to drag this icon outside, let me just go ahead and do that because we're going to be creating a, an, our own icon like this. You can just go ahead and create a circle here. The first thing that you have to do is you need to create a circle and I would recommend whenever you're creating icons, ideally start doing them by using shapes as much as you can. 
So now I'm going to give this a stroke. The stroke can be one pixel, it can be 1.5. That's also a pattern people follow and it can also be two. It just depends on how thick you want the icons to be. I'm going to give it 1.5. Maybe that's fine for now. And now I basically have to create circles like basic basic circles here. So if I, as you can see, if I basically give a three pixel circle here, since we're following a two pixel grid system, it's not going to work. You can, you won't be able to center it easily. Obviously you can do like um, minor calculations yourself. If I want to center it, I can do a 10, 10.5 and it's going to be centered. That's fine. But it's not really like it's a hacky way of doing things. And I would not recommend it. If let's say you're actually going to use a pixel perfect uh, standard for creating the icons, I would probably recommend like just doing something very simple. If you want to go ahead, probably just create like either a four pixel dot inside of it. That way, obviously, it would be much easier to center it. As you can see, it's centered. I don't have to do any magical calculations or you can just create a two pixel dot. So with the two pixel dot, you can have something like this as well. Two pixel spacing. As you can see on the left of this circle, we have a seven pixel spacing on the left on the sorry, on the right, we have a seven pixel on the left. We have a seven pixel and the spacing in between these two icons is also very similar. So now I can just go ahead and give it the same color. And this is much better in my opinion. If I go here, as you can see, uh, this is this circle that I used uh, or that's coming from the other library. The spacing here on the left is 5.8. The spacing here on the right is 5.7. The spacing at the top is 10.8. The spacing at the bottom is 10.7. So this, is, this isn't really a pixel perfect icon. It may visually look like it, but it's not. So, but this, is, this should be fine as well. Like minor deviation should be okay, but I would recommend not to deviate at all. If you want to give some spacing extra, you can give it like this. And as you can see here, it would always be six here. It would always be six. The bottom and the top should always be consistent. And this is how you go about create a pixel perfect icon. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create, let's say three or four more icons. And maybe we can choose a different library here and choose a complex icon. Uh, the gear icon is a complex icon, which sometimes people have some problem with when they're creating it. So let's just go ahead and actually do something like that. Um, I'm going to go here. I'm going to duplicate this shape. I'm going to paste the gear icon here. So the gear icon looks something like this. Once you have created an icon, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just reduce the size of this because this is what we want this inner gear to be like. Once you have done that, you can now create rectangles based on the size that you want. So always, obviously, as I mentioned, choose a uh, a multiple of two. I've chosen a multiple of two. I'm going to give this a stroke and I think this looks very thin. So I'm just going to make it six. I think this maybe looks fine. I'm going to give it a border radius like this. This looks okay too. And now I'm going to duplicate it. I duplicate it by pressing command D. As you can see, we have this shape and then I'm going to duplicate it like this. And we have something like this. Now it's really important to note. I'm just going to go back once more is again press command d that's going to duplicate it as you can see it's duplicated here now when you rotate it press shift press shift when you're rotating it if you press shift as you can see the rotation actually goes in incrementals of 15 percent or or 15 degrees so 15 degrees 30 degrees and 45 degrees let's just keep it at 45 let's do the same here duplicate it again and then this is going to be minus this is going to be 45 this is going to be minus 45 so here we have our grid icon or sorry gear icon and I can also make it slightly something like this maybe 60 makes sense here. I mean I'm just creating it in front of you um, and we can experiment with it. So now that I have all of these selected I'm also going to make it 1.5 the stroke because that's a consistent thing that we've been using. We want to keep it 1.5. Now that we have this grid icon and maybe we're happy with it or whatever let's just go ahead and combine that. If we combine that as you can see nothing really changes but all of these are combined within a shape i'm just going to remove the the fill here i'm going to go to the fill here i'm going to give it a stroke of 1.5 remove it and here we have the outer object of our uh, gear icon i can go ahead and i can create a circle here always remember use uh, a two pixel uh, uh, always use a shape that's in the two pixel multiplier 
lists. And then I'm going to make this 1.5 because that's the 1.5 is a consistent pattern that we're using. Now, obviously, you can go ahead to this shape. I'm going to go to my circle. If I want this to be very closer to the edges, I can also do something like this, and it's going to be closer to the edges. If I want the grid nodes to be slightly smaller, I can do that too. I can say that this is going to be like slightly reduced, and I can do it like that as well. But that completely depends upon you and the grid shape that you like. You can also go ahead here afterwards, since it's a union, you can say, I really want these to be very rounded, something like this, and you can do that too. But that's completely upon you. Those are minor details. Um, so now that we have that done, let's just probably drag another shape from some other file, maybe this one, or maybe we can just go ahead and choose some other file completely. I'm going to go back and obviously this loading is taking some time so i'm just going to go here and i'm going to drag a shape maybe this one as an example or i don't know maybe this one um or maybe let's just do a slightly complex one which is something like this so let's just go ahead and create something like that okay so now that we are here let's just go ahead duplicate this and let's just go ahead and see what we can think about this shape. So in order to create a shape like this, it's really important for us to realize what this shape actually would be or what this icon would be if we're just considering it in terms of a shape. So if we're just looking at it, I think it looks like an arrow or something, right? It just looks like a basic arrow. So if we were just to create an arrow, um, I'm just gonna go grab the pen tool. I'm gonna click a marker here, click here go to the center of this shape, um, which is a bit hard to find. Maybe it's something like this. Uh, we can obviously grab a line here to make sure. Yes, that seems to be the center. So now that we have that done, let's just go ahead and actually try to create a shape like that. Uh, I'm gonna remove this and let's just go ahead and first of all, obviously do this inside. We're actually creating uh, strokes that are following the inside pattern. Uh, let's just make all of these points rounded. I'm gonna go and give all of these, make all of these points rounded like this. And since you can see that I've, now that I've made them rounded, they're actually coming inside of the 20 by 20 pixel container. So now we can go ahead and manually drag them out if we want to. Um, so now that we have that done, let's just go ahead, press enter. Now we have all of the points here. I'm gonna say I wanna create another center point here. So as you can see, the center here is slightly above. Now that we have that done, I can just basically go ahead and move that maybe slightly above like that. Now that we have that done, I can press the con command key or I think like control key on the windows and I can basically just make a curve. And this curve can be, will flow now, will flow automatically now. So now that we have that done, we can obviously rotate it like this. Now, in order to make it similar to what we have there, I'm gonna press Alt and I'm gonna drag it a bit down. And I can also press Shift to drag it. Maybe something like this makes sense. I'm gonna to go to the this edge. I'm gonna press Alt and I'm gonna press Shift and I'm gonna drag it like this as well. Just make sure that whatever dragging that you're doing is actually pretty close to the drag that you have positioned here. So then we have something like this. Obviously this shape in itself also needs to be slightly uh, more rounded and stuff. So let's just go ahead and do that as well. I'm gonna go again, press Alt here. As you can see, what we actually wanted to achieve is pretty pretty close or pretty, I guess like we pretty much have it. Uh, I can press Shift and I can do the same behavior on the left and the right so I can decide how wide this is gonna be. Um, maybe we can make it slightly like this. I think this is fine. So I think we have most of the shape here and now we can basically just create a check. So I'm gonna go ahead here, obviously just zoom in to make sure that you're doing something fine. So we have the check here, let's just go ahead and make it zero. Uh, so obviously we have this zero, let's just make this like 0.5 slightly rounded, something like this. And now if you're looking at it, I think this probably looks fine make sure that it's centered by pressing for example if it wasn't centered like this i can center it by pressing the option h key and then option v to center it so if i go here option v option sorry option h and option v and that's basically going to center it now one other thing that we can do as you can see there's a small pointer here right if i go here like 
there's a slight pointer maybe very very subtle very subtle like it's, it's really hard to know and one other thing that you can see here is <clears throat> this shape is actually straight from the top right it's it's close to the edges from the top but after a while then it starts pen blending in so obviously this is more in line of the pen tool like if we don't need to do another video on the pen tool we can do that but what you can do in order to achieve like something like that you can just go to the point here and create a point here and then similarly go to a point here and create a point here now that you have that done you can basically move it to the edge you can move this point to the edge and now as you can see this is much this is slightly more straight on the top if obviously you want to make it completely straight you can press op option key the option key and you can just go ahead and center it from here i'm gonna sorry my mouse has stopped working probably the charging has finished i'm just gonna res resume this video after the mouse is working let's see okay so now that my mouse is working again thankfully we can just do the same thing here we can press uh we can just select this anchor point and we can yeah just position it like this and now it's a bit more square and if we want to give a slight curve here instead of uh targeting the anchor points what we can also do is and slightly position this whole thing i'm just going to go here slightly position all i have shift selected so again just making it slightly straight so it's flowing a bit like i guess smoothly so now you have that smooth shape obviously this shape isn't really that wide we can make it slightly uh, squished like this and if we want we can also make it slightly larger than this this is where for example since this shape is a bit squished from the edges we can increase it slightly a bit more uh, in the gutters if we want and we can then have a shape like this obviously if you want to make this much narrower you can just press shift and make it slightly narrower completely narrower or yeah just something like this and then you're going to have that pointed feeling that you have above so yeah this is how you can go about like create shapes like this also i think this may be a bit vertically uncentered so we're i'm just gonna we can also go ahead and do something like this or bring this a bit at the bottom no matter what you're doing make sure that it's falling on the certain points so yeah here we have the shape and I don't know why I'm so bothered by this. Let's just go ahead and make it slightly wider like that. So yeah, here we have all of these three shapes and I hope you have gotten an understanding of how to create these 24 by 24 pixel grid icons. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.